Paula Pant, the host of the Afford Anything podcast, likes to answer questions her listeners send in. This is a special episode where she also has Joe Selcihai from the Stacking Benjamin Show join in the fun. Hi, Paula. My name is Colin. I love your podcast and your online blog. I look forward to both of them every week. I have a pretty general question for you, but maybe you'll be able to give me some insight with some of your expertise. Let me tell you a little bit about my situation. I'm 28 years old. My wife is 27. We make a household income of 135000 per year. We have 20000 in a cash emergency fund, an additional 55000 in cash savings. We have 10000 in our health savings account, which we max out our contributions to that every year. We have 28000 in taxable brokerage accounts, 34000 in our two Roth IRAs, both of which we max out our contributions to every year, 35000 in my 457 account. Uh, additionally, we own our home, which is valued at approximately 290000 with an outstanding mortgage of 106000 We have no credit card debt, no auto loans, no student loans. Uh, we've been able to pay them off. We're very fortunate. We're in the process of trying to pay off our mortgage as well. Lastly, I have a pension through my workplace, which I get 50% of my yearly average of my three highest earning years after 25 years of service with my employer. My question for you is, what else should we be doing? I feel like we're on the right track. I feel like we're doing all the quote unquote correct things, but is there something I'm missing? Is there any insight or any advice uh, you can give us on things we might be missing? Thanks, Paula. Keep up the good work. So, uh, Wow, that's a lot of numbers. <laughs> that is a lot of numbers. And a nice, you know, 28 years old, and he and his spouse have done that many cool things. I that's he, awesome. Did he say 28 or 27? I thought he said he's 28, his spouse is 27. Ah, well, you know. I don't know. Do you think I was listening? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll take the average. We'll say 27 and a half. There we go. Yeah, that is awesome. Call in for everything that you and your wife have built by your age, and uh, just, you're super on the right track. You, you're doing everything right. Yeah, I agree, Paula. I think he's doing a lot of stuff right. But but you know you know what I missed? What I what I didn't get from Colin? And this is this is because I don't know if he's doing well or not, frankly. I mean, he's doing a lot of great stuff. He's got a lot of great numbers. You do some of these uh, compounding interest, like the rule of 72 things with his net worth. Mm -hmm. And you can come out with some seriously big numbers depending on you know, how long it is until he needs that money and uh, exactly how he has it invested. And that's the piece that I don't know. You know, when I became a financial planner, I learned that it's, it isn't about what you're saving as much as it's about what you're trying to do, right? You can, Colin and his uh, spouse can have all of these fantastic plans. They can have everything taken care of, but if they don't know what they want to do with that money, that's where the inefficiency comes in. Because really, if you start off, I believe, with a goal-based plan, I had some people tell me, well, more is more, Joe. I kind of agree with that. But if I need money in two years and I have money in a spot that historically has been really volatile over a two-year period but is really more of a 15-year type investment, I'm in the wrong spot. So as an example, Kellen has $55,000 in cash savings. Great if he needs that money in the next couple of years, but horrible if that's 15 year money. I don't know how, you know, the HSA is, is fantastic. The taxable brokerage account, $28,000. We talked about taxes earlier. If we know what the goal is and we know that goal is way in the future, we can look at whether making sure that's in a tax advantaged account makes sense or not. And that's the piece that I don't know. I think what what's important for Colin is to put time frames on his goal and say, and this is a really easy equation. It's I need to save X amount of money times Y return to get whatever the goal is. And what's cool is we know how much money he has saved and he just puts a goal on that money. Mm -hmm. And then he knows what the goal is. Let's say he wants that money for, uh, let's just say financial independence at 55 then we know if we know how much money he's saving, we know financial independence at 55, we can kind of guess about what type of lifestyle. Then the rate of return takes care of itself. And then instead of looking at all the investments that are out there, mm -hmm. there's a little sliver of the investments that are available that historically have been the type of investment that actually makes sense. And it's cool because then instead of Colin looking at the entire world of investments, now he's just looking at what benefits him the most. And that's what I like. Yeah. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, like the 28K in a taxable brokerage account, is the purpose of that to have, you know, is it is that sort of like an emergency fund in the sense that it's money that he can easily access even though he doesn't plan on it? You know, is the purpose of that 
It could be for any number of reasons, right? You could have that money in there for any variety of reasons. So, yeah, what's that for? 10K in an HSA is not that much. That's uh, one thing that stood out to me when I first heard that was, you know, pump up the HSA as, as much as you can because that's one of that's like the ultimate tax advantaged account in a lot of different ways. Uh, and I'm going to link to an article in the show notes about like the many, many, many levels of tax advantages that come from an HSA. But for the most part, Joe, yeah, I'd echo what you said. Um, one thing that's, you know, stood out to me was he mentioned the pension that he gets 50 percent of his yearly average after I think he said 25 years of service. But I never heard of if is that a goal or not? You know, that's yeah. that's a long period of time to be in service to a company. Do you call and do you want to be there for that long? If you do, awesome. But yeah, I mean, at, at this point, Colin, you've got such good financial footing. And the whole purpose of building solid financial footing is so that you have a platform from which you could do anything. And so now that you're very well established, the question is not how do I become, how do I pour another inch of concrete on this already strong foundation? Like the foundation is poured, the concrete has cured. Now it's, I've got the foundation. What next? Yeah. What am I building? Yeah, exactly. Ooh, that's yeah. a much better analogy. Or well, metaphor. you said, fi- well, you started know, right? it. You said foundation. <laughs> you started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love what he had, you know, and we talked about not liking Texas wag the dog. But besides that number in the HSA, how do you like the fact that he does have the HSA, the Roth IRA, the 457, yeah. and the money that's in taxable positions? Like if I'm his financial planner, uh, Mm -hmm. which I don't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. But if I was his financial planner, he's giving me a great, you talked about platform, a great platform to help him from because he's got flexibility. He's taking advantage of great tax breaks today, but with the Roth, he's giving himself a lot of flexibility for tax breaks down the road too. So, and the H, well, and even more than that, the HSA, like you said. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and then one, one last thing I'll just say is, Colin, if you, I realize this answer is like a little bit broad and fuzzy and esoteric. So if you just want like a straight, flat, simple answer, when in doubt, you can always just pay off your house. That's what I tell myself every time. If I'm not sure what I want to do with my money, I'm like, well, when in doubt, I can always just pay off a mortgage. And it may or may not be the best option, but it's certainly not going to kill me. I'm probably not going to be on my deathbed being like, oh, I so regret paying off that mortgage. I could have gone to Sizzler. <laughs> I could have been a contender at the Sizzler. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, you know, it's easier, though, Paula, than paying mm-hmm. off the mortgage. What's that? It's very simple math. And there's there's calculators all over there. Just take a look at where you're at in relation to your goal. It is yeah. not as hard as people make it. I mean, there's so many, all of the investment houses, Fidelity, Vanguard, everybody right. has online calculators. Use one of those, figure out where you're at in relation to your goal. And I think- But what if he doesn't have a goal? Like what if he doesn't know what yeah. that goal is? That's interesting because we were actually talking about that uh, a couple of weeks ago on the Stacking Benjamin show. Amanda Steinberg from Daily Worth uh, and I were having this discussion and she's like, goals are overrated. <laughs> like, and mm-hmm. I went, whoa, wait a minute. Uh, but she said, you know, a lot of people get intimidated by having goals. I think it's realized that whatever goals you, you put down, realize that that's in sand and you can change it next year, next week or the day before. But I love having direction with my money and I like having, I like having earmarks. If I can earmark a dollar to a thing that I want, then if I decide I don't want that anymore, that just frees the dollar up for me to do something else with. Hmm. And my dad also, (laughs) while I'm on my step stool. Okay. My dad said that to me one time. He said, you know, why am I going to do this financial plan when everything's going to change over the next 12 months? Well, and that takes planning and makes it seem like it's a point in time thing. Really what planning is to me, it's like you're on a plane going to Europe, let's say. I mean, the pilot's adjusting the plane all the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that if you set up a plan out today and you say, well, guess what? The wind blew. And the wind might have been the market. The wind might have been my ability to save. I lost my job. I got a raise. We had children. We decided not to have children. You know, we bought a new house. It, the wind could be a bajillion different things, a bajillion being the technical number. Mm-hmm. But that wind blows it off course. Then you just tweak the plan again. And you're consistently, just like that pilot, tweaking which way the plane's headed. Yeah. And I guess, well, depending on the type of pilot that you are and the type of plane that you're flying, 
if you were flying towards Europe and you decided that you wanted to go to North Africa or, you know, you wanted to go to wanted to go even further and push into Asia, you could still do that, too. Yeah. And yeah. then your bosses at United would be so mad at you. <laughs> yeah, right. But but have you ever flown Spirit Air? Whenever I'm on Spirit <laughs> oh, Air, I'm, a, I'm afraid we'll end up in Djibouti or somewhere when I'm only headed to Tampa. Oh, I got stranded in Colombia because of Spirit Air once. Yeah, not my favorite airline. I got completely stranded. The pilots went on strike. And so Spirit just canceled the flight because the pilots were on strike. And then they wouldn't book me on another flight or, you know, like they wouldn't help me out whatsoever. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. that's customer service. Exactly. And oh, and here was the the rough part. It was a pre-planned strike. So at the time that I bought the airline ticket, they oh. knew that the pilots were going to be on strike. And yet they never even warned me. So on the day before my flight, I get this email saying, Sorry, pilots on strike, flights canceled, and you're stuck in Colombia. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, I'd be so angry. I know. I know. So ever since then, I've referred to them as kill my spirit. <laughs> I, I I felt the same way. You know, I'm not the world's tallest guy, but I am 6'1". And when I used to fly spirit sometimes, you know, I, I'm, I'm eating my ankles and my mm. knees uh, because it's, it's just a cattle car. I get on and I just want to go <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm going down the going down the walkway. Uh, that's that is one thing I've got going for me. I'm five one, so I'm I'm travel sized. <laughs> you you really are. All you got to do is make sure the plane is going where your ticket says. <laughs> Togo. <laughs> what am I doing here? Hey, did you enjoy this excerpt from the Afford Anything podcast? Then click to download our free ebook, Escape. You'll be taken to a page where you can enter your email for immediate access to everything you need to know about escaping the nine to five grind to live life on your terms. And you can also subscribe with one simple click to get alerted when new videos are uploaded.